I've been doing this for 16 years, bro. I still mess up. <laughs> Trust me, it happens more than you like to think. Mic check, mic check, what's going on? Welcome into another episode of the KZ Community Beat. I'm your host, Ross Martinez. In the hot seat this week from Proctor Rec Center, we have Jalen Jenkins, the community rec coordinator. Jalen, man, I saw you posting on Facebook about Think Like a Man. It's this new program that you created, right? Yes, sir. So we're going to talk about that. But the thing that got me, when you came in, I'm like, yo, this man's young. I'm like, yo, how young are you, 23? Yes, sir, yes, sir. 23, and you trying to positively impact community. Hey, man, I definitely, uh, I have a lot of inspiration working at Proctor Rec Center with uh, Ms. Jonell and, like, a lot of other, you know, figures there. So they kind of helped me uh, organize this, and, you know, they're just great role models for this. So 23, born and raised Peorian, right? Yes, sir. So what block you grew up on? Uh, I actually live, like, five minutes away from here on uh, in the River West. Okay. Outside, yeah. yeah. So you've seen a lot of things growing up here. I have. Uh, heard a lot of things, seen a lot of things, been through a lot of things. 23, young man, born and raised Peorian. Who inspired you to want to give back? Um, I would probably say just my parents and just my family in general. Uh, growing up, I had a very close-knit family, but as we got older, we kind of like, you know, trickled off into our own like little things so i wanted to see this community as a family so i just wanted to help us grow as a whole because i know peoria it's a lot of stuff going on these last few years last few weeks these last few days Mm -hmm. honestly so um this is just that's kind of what i went through just i don't think anybody really like helped or inspired i just i think the community inspired me honestly so you like a you're a given person you just want to help yeah i just that's kind of how i grew up who was like one of your biggest role models growing up um, I would say my uncle, my uncle Melvin, he, uh, he was in the military for about 30 years now, um, in the Marine branch and, uh, just seeing how he helped my family, um, and his community. Cause he comes back here a lot. Uh, he goes down to Harrison, uh, Roosevelt. He talks to a lot of schools and he's just a good role model for the community in general. So having him in my corner, like a zero to 23, it just helped me out a lot. Have you uh, run past him, what you're doing right now at Proctor? Uh, he's seen it. Uh, I kind of do want to ask him to help out, but he is a busy man. He, he doesn't even live here. He lives in Virginia. Mm. He, uh, he goes back and forth from Virginia to California. So I kind of want to do it on my own and then, you know, talk with him after to see what I can pull on next year. So think like a man, this program that you got going, this is your brainchild? Like you just came up with it? You're like, yo, let me ride out with this? Uh, yes. Uh, at the beginning of the summer, Ms. Jonell and I, we sat down and we kind of talked about what we should add to Proctor for the community. And I realized that a lot of young men, including myself growing up in the area, we didn't have like a lot of role models or like just inspiration or things that I didn't know growing up that I probably should have known, like just money management, personal grooming and like cooking and stuff. Um, I kind of told her my idea and she she backed me behind it. And, you know, that's that's where we are now. Dang, that's pretty dope, yo. Like, you had somebody just, like, all in on your concept. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that feel to have somebody that you look up to in a way that's also someone you're working with to be like, nah, I like this golden idea you got going? Yeah, um, it honestly felt great. Uh, I've been at Proctor for almost five years now, so Ms. has always been, you know, a big supporter of me uh, from my first year to the last week. So um, it just, it, it wasn't really a new feeling because she's been like this. But just seeing how the community loved it, that that really what is what touched me. Yo, I saw you got mad shares on social media, like, very quickly. Yeah, I did. I didn't really expect it to grow like that. I kind of just um, posted it. I tagged a couple people who I also know helping the community. So it, it kind of blew up, and, you know. I mean, everything's like six degrees of separation is what they <laughs> say, right? Yeah. So I, I saw the message because Demario Boone, mm-hmm. friend of the show, I good dude giving back to district 150 he shared it i'm like hey yo like what's this because we had just come out of a really horrible week with violence and everything that was happening so when you're thinking about putting this program together like what thoughts besides our lack of role models were you kind of trying to focus on um honestly i feel like the youth today is just I wouldn't say we're going down like the wrong path. I just feel like we're exposed to a lot more and a lot of the things that we're exposed to aren't the right things. So we may know how to dance on TikTok, but we may not know how to cook and uh, clean and uh, 
just set up stuff in our area. So I think with the lack of role models, I feel like as a man, and not even just as a man, just as a human being and as a person, we focus on the wrong things today. And we just got to kind of get back to being grounded. Mm, I like that, man. So you've been working at Proctor Rec five years now. So how'd you get involved there? Um, Cause you young man, you twenty three. I'm ten yeah. years older than you, fam. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I I went off to college. Um, I graduated in 2018. I went off. Um, then I took a break, a little uh, gap semester, and I I just that whole like gap semester. I wanted to figure out what I really wanted to do because in high school I kind of was doing what like you were doing. I was doing like the morning news and announcements, and I majored in communication. So when I went off to college, I was just I felt like I was kind of stuck. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So when I got back uh, to Peoria, I reached out to a few people in the community. That I wanted to actually be like a baseball coach because I used to play baseball. Mm. But then I kind of got wrapped into being a camp counselor at Proctor. And it's just been history ever since. I've kind of leveled up every year from camp counselor, supervisor, and now the community rec coordinator there. So what drives you? I'm just helping people, honestly. I like, I like working with kids because um, growing up, I don't feel like, um, actually, I don't, I don't really, I think growing up, I realized how much I lacked from childhood. So I kind of try to give as much as I can to the community and the kids at Proctor Rec Center. I try to be like the happy face they see every time they come in there and they love me there. I, I love them there. So I think that's what really drives me just seeing kids faces smile and stuff. I love when you said that because you said that with a smile. You're like, well, I love it there, and the kids love me back. Yeah. Like that's a that's like a self validation. Like, all right, my hard work is paying off. Yeah. And how has you how have you seen the growth with the with the members over there as, as you've been doing more? It's five years now. Yeah. So was it like a slow uptick from them trusting you and what you're doing there, or were you me like, all right, he cool? Um, <laughs> I think I was kind of like you, honestly. Um, my first year there. We had a lot of kids for the camp counselors. And I think uh, every group besides me had two camp counselors. So my first year is just me and like 15 kids, eight hours a day. I'm just going back and forth throughout the building and going on field trips and stuff. So I kind of felt that from my first year, it was a lot of trust put into me. And once Ms. Jonelle and Ms. Clara and Ms. McKee, everybody there that saw the growth, they uh, advocated for me to, you know, get uh, leveled up and grow there with them. I love that, man. It's always great when you have community members that empower other community members. Yeah. Um, and that leads us into what you're doing. You're trying to empower the community. So take us through this program, uh, type of things you're going to be focusing on, and uh, what lessons you want the community to learn from them. All right. I got you. Um, honestly, me and this program will be run by L.C. Uh, Davis. He also works at Proctor. He's the assistant manager there. He's real supportive, too. Great leader. Um it's a six-week program taking place from October 7th to, I believe, uh, November 11th. Um, and we'll just be teaching the young man, like, basic necessities and things that they may not know that they actually need growing up. So, like, um, personal grooming, exercising, cooking and cleaning, self-control, communication, public speaking. Um, we also go over just their confidence and mental health, and that's what I really want to focus on. I'm uh, going to actually start the program off with talking about mental health and confidence because I know for a fact men in general we don't get to talk a lot about our emotions and stuff so I kind of want to start that at an early age like hey it's okay to be upset it's okay to be sad don't think that you know you're going to get looked at any differently from showing emotion and stuff that's dope yeah because depression in men is a big thing um it what well, I'm 33 now so I think the entire mental health wave kind of hit right when I was in college mm -hmm. So I was, what, 24, 25? About your age now is where it started becoming a thing. Yeah. And back then, it would just be, a hey, walk it off. Yeah. You good. Don't show them emotion. Don't show them cry. Mm -hmm. So who instilled that on you that it was okay to harness that emotion positively? Um, I would probably say... I really, I really think it was my mom or myself in general... Um, I, I grew up with a single mother. I'm, I, me and my dad are close, but he just he didn't live here, so it was really just me, my mom, and my sister. So living with two women in the house, um, I wouldn't say that they were like emotional, but they always made me feel safe in terms of being able to cry or being able to talk about my day or being able to um, 
just tell them what's going on. So, but the thing that changed me was when I like grew up and I became friends with other people and I realized that like um, they don't get to talk about their mental health or they, they don't get to talk about what they're going through. I was like, hmm, maybe not everybody, you know, gets this ability or has the ability to think that it's a safe space for them to talk. That's true, man. I, I've had moments where I'm breaking down inside and I'm with a group of guys and none of them want to hear that. Yeah. They all going through their own shit. Yeah. And we're here now is like, I love anytime I see other men supporting men's ability to access those emotions and just kind of feel them in the safe area. Because too many times we pent them up, we have the stress inside, man. And did you have moments in your life where you tried to do the opposite, where you try to keep them inside and you saw the effect of it? Um. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely did. Uh, when my, my dad wasn't around, it definitely was tough. And I kind of fell out of touch with that side of the family. So I kind of just bottled it up inside and didn't really get to talk because the only person I could talk to was my dad because that's the family, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that just showed me that it's not good to bottle it up because I was just so angry at the world, just so angry at um, what was going on in my life. And I think that set me back more than it actually helped because instead of, like, talking about it, I just was bottled up inside and one day I just, you know, burst it out and it would be a lot. So that's interesting how you said it like you said the side, right? Mm -hmm. So did you see your actions display certain things when you were trying to put those emotions aside rather than addressing them? Yeah, I definitely I definitely did. Um I, I realized that when I try to do my normal like daily activities and I didn't really have the motivation or I didn't really want to do it or I would talk to like some friends or some family and I would take out that anger on them and it kind of changed their image uh, of me to them and once I realized I'm glad I realized that at an early age because it could have been a few years that went by where I just acted like that and didn't care about the repercussions but I definitely uh, realized it early and was like you, you can't do this you got to talk to somebody uh, so I started therapy and got to talk to a therapist uh, i'm thankful for my best friends in my life uh, my mom and my dad so it's just you know i'm glad i'm at a good spot right now that intrigued man because like i didn't think about going to therapy until lockdown 2020 yeah. and i'm 33 lockdown was a couple years ago so i was already kind of like a man at that yeah. point and things that you're addressing right now like i'm kind of like oh shit like <laughs> i i respect you because at 23, when did you go to the therapy? 20, 21? Uh, I was actually like 16, 17 maybe. I think it was my junior year of high school. It was just, I think the year 2017 was a lot for me. And it was, I think that was senior year too, so. Damn, yeah. That I mean, that's a full transition of a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything going on, I don't want to deep dive too much because I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable with things. But at what point did you finally accept, like, oh, I got to talk to somebody? <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty funny because, um, like I said, I used to bottle it all up. So at the beginning of 2017, uh, it's like the end of the junior year, I was going through a lot of friend group changes, uh, finding out what I wanted to do in college and trying to find my own path. Uh, the summer was pretty rough, um, just falling out with a lot of people. And then I think like August, September, and October, it was just like hell on earth. So... I finally told my mom and like my sister, and I was like, I just I need to talk to like somebody. And um, I, I, I didn't stay at therapy for long. I think I stayed for like two to three months and then I left. But during those two to three months, it definitely helped a lot. It, learned, it made me learn a lot more about myself and just how to talk to people. Ah, uh, so you learned the, um, the self talk. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I yeah. still have issues with that sometimes. Like, I, I use it as disarming humor. You know how they say, like, self-deprecating sometimes? Um, that's been my thing in therapy that I had to, you know, conquer in a way. But, yo, did you have any friends that... Because I remember when I told my immediate friends, like, yo, I think I'm going to therapy. I got shit. I got to get off my mind. Not much as my mind. One told me, just go to God. That's all you need. And I'm like, that's cool, but I, I still need to talk to somebody that got some life experience. And then some were like... Man, go do X, Y, Z. Exactly. Get your mind off it. Yeah. Get distracted, which that don't help. Yeah. Because I have in the past. 
whether it's find a woman, find something yeah, to drink, smoke, smoke, whatever. Right. Tried it, That's made right. shit worse. Did you have any backlash from close friends to you at all? Um, I wouldn't say I had like any backlash. I I find myself to be like a very private person, so I don't think I really told anybody. Private person, what we talk about in a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, that's that's crazy because I definitely learned to be more open. So you know, you can see the growth through the pro- podcast. Uh, back then, I definitely was private. Um, I think I probably told two friends. Um, but those friends, they were definitely understanding. They uh kind of knew what I was going through. They saw like me leading up to the eventually like crash and burn. So they were uh very understanding. I don't think anybody. I wouldn't have told anybody else probably that uh, I didn't think would understand. So, not not any backlash to say. But now it's like a proud moment. Like, hey, I put myself through that. Yeah, that's dope, man. I mean, now you're in a position to help other people. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about that, that's one facet of what you're doing, which is the mental health, which is huge, big. But then we have the economics uh, aspect of it, of money management. So what type of things? that we can pitch to people that, like, hey, if you come check this out, this is what you're going to learn. Yeah. Um, well, during the summer, every summer for the last three years, I believe, we've had a program going on. It's called a Reality Check, where we take kids to the UI, U of I Extension Center, and they give them, like, money that they can buy things at the place, and they kind of learn, like, what they should spend their money on, like laundry detergent or groceries or just um, – Cleaning, cleaning these items that they may need for their house and stuff. So I think that's kind of what I want to teach them because I'm 23. I was a broke college student. I'm still learning the money management side of life too. So as long as they're like fifth and eighth grade, getting started early, I think that this may help them a lot. The entry level of, hey, you don't want to go for the $6 thing. <laughs> yeah. You want to go for the thing on clearance exactly. on the bottom shelf, bro. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you going you gonna to get with the coupon era? Because I remember exactly. I used to have that too, yeah, man. Yeah, I learned that from my mom. Yeah. yeah. So money saving, being being intelligent with the money going out. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything with money saving? Um, Yeah, I, I want to teach them how to uh, take like a percentage of the money that they earn and put it in like a fund or – a bank account or even give it to their parents for like college or just to save some stuff that they may want in the future because i know like as a kid or like that pre- preteen area era you just want to buy 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 you want you want the latest fashion the latest shoes you want the new systems new games so you got to be smarter uh and I, that's not me saying like don't have fun as a kid but I had a lot of fun as a kid, and I kind of regret that. So, <laughs> It's a memory, but, yeah, yeah. You, you can move a little bit smarter out here. You know, I remember when I got uh, – when I first got my big check in radio. <laughs> I've been doing this for 15-plus years, yeah. bro. And I was like, I think I bought a new Nike every other week. And once I look back, I'm like, yo, <laughs> I have 20 pairs. Great. But, like, that's a lot of money. Exactly. And those are sneakerheads can add up what 20 pair actually. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. I was, I was, I was a little unhinged. Yeah. So that's dope. We got, we're, we're teaching them how to control their emotions. Mm-hmm. Not control, but also how to assess them, exactly. which is, I think, the foundation to anything as, as being an adult. But more specifically, like, we're talking as a man. Because if you don't control your emotions, they'll control you. Exactly. And you don't want to be controlled by anger. (laughs) I have. And let's just say, (laughs) man, I've definitely lost some friends for it. So we control our emotions. We understand our finances. Now the public speaking aspect of it, which I I feel like this is kind of like falling in the line here, man. So talk to us about the public speaking aspect of what you got going. Well, uh, like I said, um, back in high school, uh, I took... I took AV class, and in that class, we had to do the morning announcements that took place every day. Um, and then I did that for four years, so my senior year, I got to do uh, the weekend report where it's like my own show that will uh, take place uh, every Friday. And going into high school, I was like nervous. I didn't like public speaking. I hated it. I was a shy kid because I went to a private school, uh, Price Cooper, and so it was like a class of 12. I go from a class of 12 to a class of 20, 30 kids. So. Um, that definitely was tough. So in these last almost 10 years, I've been doing a lot of public speaking. Um, mm. Just I do music. I do uh, other like I make videos with my cousins. We do a, a lot of uh, public stuff. So 
I think with this public speaking um, part, that's my favorite part, actually, because I know a lot of men, like I said, going time back into the mental health, we just don't talk. We don't like to talk. It's just a hassle. So finding, like, the comfort, comfortableness in ourselves to be able to uh, talk in public will help. It's that confidence of presenting yourself with, yeah. with, lack of better terms, confidence. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't know if you've had this situation where you walk in a room and you may know an answer or a solution mm-hmm. or something, but there's 25 other people talking. Yeah. And you're like, somebody else got that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember I had that this past weekend where I, a group chat's going on and they're asking for an opinion. And I type out a paragraph and I know it's right. I, I know from a business standpoint what I want to say was correct. But then I hit delete. And then five minutes later, another dude types out exactly what I just said, and they all validate it. I'm like, damn, why am I second-guessing my own opinion? Yeah. That, that definitely is what happened to me. Um, when I got to college, I did the same thing. I was like, I know the answer to this question, but there's, other, there's 20 other adults in here that can answer this. So the way I kind of learned public speaking, my dad, he's a comedian, so I tried my best to be, um, like, funny. Or, like, I try to crack the jokes during the uh, presentation just to make it easier on myself and on the class. Like, like you said, it's not, it doesn't have to be professional. You know, you just got to get your point across. Wow. Nice. Your pop's a comedian? What comedian? Um, he's actually pretty known here. Um, when people see me in public, they're always like, is your dad Jason Jenkins? And I'm like, Jason yeah, Jenkins? Why yeah. do I know that Jason Jenkins? He has a show uh, September 22nd and the 23rd here at the Jukebox. Really? Yeah, yeah. Hey, selfless plug, let's go. <laughs> I like it. Hey, shout out to Pops. Yeah, Might have to check that out. What uh what life lessons have you learned from him as a comic besides that? Um I watch I don't watch all his shows because he he embarrasses me sometimes, but <laughs> the ones I do watch, um, he kinda talks about, you know, his struggles as a father or like, you know, the way he grew up. So the life lesson I really learned, he's very confident in himself. And I like that, um, and I still kind of struggle with that, but I do as- aspire to uh, kind of have that confidence and just the ability to promote myself more. Because with the shares that I got on this, that actually surprised me because I, I really don't promote myself. So to see the love and support, it did a lot for me. Yeah, how that boosts you up with seeing all that love so um, quickly? <laughs> my manager, she actually uh, called me when she saw, like, all the shares on Facebook, and she kind of like pumped my head up and was like, "Oh, you're you pretty popular. You should uh, be one of those role models." And I'm like, <laughs> "You know, I, Might I as appreciate well. that." <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, it definitely did a lot for my confidence, uh, learning and seeing that you know people support and uh, love what I'm doing. And we've actually had like almost three hundred dollars in do- donations for the program already. Really? Like, and they just yeah, it just went up a week ago. Exactly. Yo, that's dope, man. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Like, I think, well, I want to ask you after I say this, but coming from Chicago, I've been here about a year and a half now, going on two years, I think in, in March it'll be two years. Um, the one thing I'm starting to love the most about this city is how big of a heart mm-hmm. the community really has. I mean, yeah, there's negative to it, but when they support, they support. So what are some things you've fallen in love like for 23 years you've lived here like what do you love about this place? Um I definitely love all like when it's like a national holiday the city does a lot like the river plex for the 4th of July um it's always a lot of people down there having fun um and then stuff in the park district like at Proctor we have our annual frosty uh giveaway which always has a lot of return we give away gifts to the community um, and the kids, and then we have like Park of Palooza, where it's a bunch of bouncy houses and stuff for kids. So, oh, so you know Chanel? I do. I know I Chanel's know my people. Chanel. I love Chanel. I love she, Chanel too. Chanel and Ezra, I love them both, yo. <laughs> they good did people. The hiring for me too. Are you serious? Yeah, she, was <laughs> <laughs> she a big personality. That girl's yeah. awesome. She do a lot for the community, man. Yeah. Yo, that's dope. Mm-hmm. So you, I feel like you've. At this stage of life, you're starting to find more mentors or at least more role models, male, female, that are starting to add yeah. to this version of you. What are some things that you've been loving seeing the change or growth in you over the last, like, three, four years? Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's a great thing to talk about. Like I said, I didn't really – I feel like when I went to college, I lacked direction. I was just kind of going with the flow, just, you know, taking what life gives me. Um 
I really did not know what I wanted to do. And ironically, my mom, she worked with kids for almost 20 years, like uh, my whole life. Um, so just being around her and the kids, I was like, hey, like maybe, you know, that's what I should do. So seeing how how I first was with the kids and how, you know, shy and like not really having a voice to now when I'm at Proctor Center, it's Mr. Jalen, Mr. Jalen, hey, Mr. Jalen, Mr. Jalen. And just building that relationship with the kids, that growth in me, it just, like, it adds that confidence. Um, I feel like I have found my purpose mm. in life and just the direction that I'm going, and it's a, it's a great one. Is it, like, surreal sometimes when you wake up, like, what? No, nah, this is actually it. Like, I'm supposed to be on this path? Yeah, it, it is. Um, the funny thing is, I, it hasn't been, like, a continuous five years. It's been, like, more like three and a half. I've actually... Like taking taking a break from Proctor for like two months, a couple of times, but I always come back. Like it always leads me right back to there. So just Why? seeing that, honestly, I've never really, I never really known. I just it feels like home. It's like a family there. So I like being in places that want me there and that I love it there. And like like, like I keep saying, Miss Jonell and uh Mr. Davis at Proctor, they they love and support me. So. As long as they're there, I'll be there. Is it a safe assumption to make, like, this is... Proctor may have been the first area in your life where you felt fully accepted? It actually is. Now that you say that, that you just uh, put that thought on me. Um, it definitely has. I'm not saying other areas in your life, but this version of you yeah. coming out of college, starting to find direction. Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel like it's a safe place for Jalen to be Jalen? Yeah. Um... Not just, you know, the comedian son. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it definitely it definitely is. Um one of the first questions that Mr. Jonell asked me during the interview process, and this is like almost five years ago, was um she wants to know what I do like for myself, like in my free time and how I can help Proctor. And once I told her I was like a writer and like creative and, you know, I do like broadcasting and stuff, her face lit up because that's what she wanted to bring to Proctor. She just wants um new things that Proctor, she wants to make Proctor like the hottest place in Peoria. So um, being there, I've actually learned to be myself and um, have a voice there. Like um, I'm full time, so I have input on things going on in the building, uh, programs. So they listen to me and I definitely appreciate that they do. Um, so That's dope, man. The, tell me a little bit more about Proctor, because this is one of the first times I'm hearing about the area. Wow. I know. It's, <laughs> I'm like a shut-in when I'm not working. <laughs> it's uh, a change my therapist says I got to make. <laughs> yeah. Oh Well, Proctor has been around for a long time. I don't know the exact date, and I'm not going to give an inaccurate, inaccurate answer, because I know Mitchell Nell is probably going to listen to this. <laughs> um, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, Mitchell Nell. I've heard great things. <laughs> Um, but Proctor, it's, it's a rec center, um, but it's not just a rec center. And I hate that, you know, that's the name. I would probably just call it Proctor, um, because it's a lot more. We have an after school program. Uh, as of late, we had a dance team that a Royal family, uh, led by Courtney Mason and Shanika Williams. Uh, they, pro they practice there. Uh, we have basketball leagues going on. Um, so it's definitely like a hot spot for the community. And along with that, we offer, like, programs on the weekend. Like, with my class, Think Like a Man, we have a cheer camp. We have young and intermediate ballers where we teach K through uh, fourth graders how to play basketball. Um, so it's just it's just a lot. It's like, a you know, a place that the community can come to learn and to be active. Feel safe like community. Yeah. Mm. Has that been difficult in this area to kind of find a safe area? Just asking because I've seen a lot of violence since moving here. Not saying it's, it's a negative area because I come from Chicago yeah. and God knows we got our 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 demons also. But is that hard to come by here for youngsters? Uh, wow, it sounded mad old saying it like that, bro. Youngsters. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out for my purposes. <laughs> <laughs> youngsters, oh my God. Yeah. Um, I would say. I would say it's pretty it's pretty hit or miss. Hit or miss. Um, we have some programs that are successful. We have some programs that can do a little better. But I all I think it all depends on the community. And I hate that that we have like that 
image or negative connotation attached to where we are located um, because it's not really what it seems like. It's, it's always a lot of people outside on the playgrounds. We're always having fun there. Um, so it has been tough trying to get that branding away from Proctor Rec Center, but we do love and support the people that come out and uh, show us love every single year. So as long as we have them, they got us, and, you know, we're open to, you know, meeting in, adding new more people there. That's an amazing point you make because people understand outside looking in, there's a certain connotation because of media, which is something I like to disprove using the platform I have by inviting people out from areas where a lot of the other demographic, you know, mm. like I talked to Becky Rossum from Pure Community Against Violence, PCAP. And there's there's this concept that we talked about, about living in a survivor mode, where you live in an area that may not have the right funding, may not have a grocery store, may not have proper uh, CTA. Um, so take us through somebody that's lived in the experience. Like, disprove this stuff for me, because I love somebody that listens to this that don't know the area well, <laughs> that can be disproven right now from someone who's lived and grew up in the area. Um, so, like, we all know the last couple of weeks has been a uh, tough year in Peoria. So I'll use that as an example uh, for our after-school program and just being a facility. We got a lot of phone calls um, from concerned civilians and parents uh, if we were still having our after-school program or if we were still open. And we, you know, we comforted them, comforted them in uh, knowing that we weren't going to be outside. Uh, we were going to keep all the kids in the building um, and that they can still come and be safe with us. Like, so, I don't know. I just really don't like that um, that's attached to us because the work that we all put in that building, me, Ms. Jonell, Mr. LC, Ms. Claire, Ms. Julie, like, we all put our hearts into Proctor and um, we try our hardest to make every program there amazing. So, just that, you know, that one percentage that has that, you know, view, it's hard for us to, you know, be happy with that or accept that because we know what it is and we just want to get that point across to them. But how do we get that point across to them? That's what we're still trying to figure out. That's a struggle because there's there's a very strong community yeah. from what I've been told. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had a couple instances where I've gone, I've, I've seen it, and I just see families having a good time. Yeah. And you have that 1% of BS that happens, yeah. and a lot of people like to run with that narrative. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some beautiful things you've seen in the, in the area where you grew up? Um, like I said, I, look, I lived in the River West pretty much all my life, but my grandpa, he lives further down in the South. And right now, I think they're down there renovating um, near Harrison, and he's Gordon, I believe that's the name now. Um, and they're putting a lot of new things in that community it's it's been 20 years it, but finally you know we're getting a, a lot of new things down there where i feel like it's deserved because um i used to door dash like while i was taking online classes in college and seeing like all the neighborhoods like the nice neighborhoods and i come down here and it's like man like something's missing like we don't have like the beautiful like aspect like it just feels like people don't care in a in a, in a way so mm. Um, some of the beautiful things that I've seen just from Proctor, uh, we've had kids go through our program and they come back years later and they still remember us and they're like, hey, like, you really helped us out a lot uh, learning this, such and such, and just growing up here. So that's really what I like the most is just being having an impact on the children and stuff. It's always dope when you see like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's just like a nice validation of all the effort you put in, man. Exactly. Like, I used to coach uh, Little League Baseball back in the hood, South Side. And, like, I, I saw a cat when I went back this past weekend. He is 20 now. He got a winning ring on. Wow. Got a good job. I'm like, oh, my God, yo. <laughs> like, hey, yo. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, my guy. <laughs> but it, it's, it's dope to see everything that you took the time mm -hmm. to, to help mature yeah. and to grow and cultivate it actually come into fruition. And, exactly. You know, what do you hope for your time spent at Proctor in the next, like, five, ten years? Uh, that's 
That's actually pretty tough to. Uh, it's a loaded question, bro. Yeah, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty tough to assess. Um, there may be a lot of movement in the next ten years, so I really, I really don't know as far as my position and just the voice that I'll have in the community. But I hope it elevates, and I hope I become one of the prominent figures in Peoria, like Demario Boone or like Miss Chanel or like Miss Courtney or Miss Donnell. So um, I really hope that. I can use Proctor as a platform to, you know, boost my ideas and, you know, my ways to help the community. It just helps you grow even more, man. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Yeah. Um, for this program, Think Like a Man, what are the run dates, more information on it? Um, we will be uh, having our class every Saturday starting October 7th to November 11th, and it's from 1030 to 1230. Uh, we'll have a speaker. We may go on some field trips. We'll have food. Um, we're just going to be a bunch of guys being dudes, you know, having fun, uh, relaxing, and getting to know more about the world and each other in the class. A, sp- a safe space, in, yeah. in essence. Uh, to get more information on about it, where can we go? Uh, you can call Proctor at 309-673-9183. Um, you can go on the Peoria Park District website. You can go on Proctor's Facebook page. Um, we have a bunch of flyers going up. And a bunch of advertisements. Uh, you can even look on my Facebook page, Jalen Jenkins. Um, contact me for any information about it. And that's uh, pretty much it. So here's a question I like to ask everybody at the end of the pod. As we get the conversations and talking. This podcast is used as a collection of stories. Mm-hmm. And every good story, every good book has a gold nugget that you take away from it. You know, The Giver, um, Kite Runner. So many of these amazing stories. A great Gatsby back in the day. Um when someone's done listening to your story, when everything's said and done, you still young. You got you twenty three yeah. young. <laughs> you still got so much more to grow into and achieve and empower mm-hmm. by the lane that you're talking about. When that story is said and done, I know it may be a while before. What do you hope someone gets away from your story? Um, I really hope people can take away that um, just to never be afraid. Like always have confidence and faith in yourself you may not always be right it may not always be what you're meant to do um down the line but in the moment if you're confident in something if you have faith in something go all in lead with your heart and uh, just give your all so that's that's what i lead by that's what i live by so i hope when it's all said and done that people can uh see me and see what i've done for the world and the community and just say i want to be like him one day I love it, man. All right. It's been another episode of the KZ Community Beat. I'm your host, Ross Martinez. My guest in the hot seat this week, young man 23, Jalen Jenkins from uh, the Community Rec Coordinator over at Proctor Rec Center, beginning Think Like a Man, uh, starting on what days again? Saturday, October 7th. October 7th, run all the way to November 11th, 1030 to 1230, fifth uh, to eighth graders. Yes, sir. All right, more information, make sure you check out PeoriaPark.org or hit us up and we'll get you in contact. It's the audio KZ123. I'm Ross. I'm out. Peace.